Thank you, Provost, and good morning, members. When you hear your name, could you confirm your attendance, please? We have an apology this morning from Councillor Maitland. Provost Todd? Yeah. We have an apology from Councillor Friel. Councillor Cowan? Here. Councillor Mackay? Present. Councillor Barton? Yep, here. We have an apology this morning from Councillor Holland. Councillor Lennox? Good morning, yeah. Councillor Crawford? Yeah. Councillor Watts? I'm here, Lynn. Thank you. Councillor Filson? Yeah. Councillor Hogg? Here, yeah, thank you. And Councillor Stewart? I'm here, thanks, Lynn. And as a reminder, members, today's proceedings will be recorded and will be uploaded to the Council's website for repeated viewing. Thank you, Provost. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, folks. Um, just uh, as we have explanation, uh, ever since COVID, we allow members to come online uh, through Teams or Zoom meetings and they can take an active part. That's a legal aspect that is allowed. And may I ask uh, members online to switch off their microphone uh, unless they're speaking, please, and uh, if everybody could switch off their mobile phones or put them to silent. Thank you. Uh, the next step is uh, declarations of interest. And this is just uh, a reassurance to folk that there's no councillors voting on any planning issues that may have an interest in that planning of some sort. So we always ask for declarations of interest, folks. Councillor Lennox, Provost. Yep. Morning, Provost. Thanks. Um, I was just to make the committee aware that in the interest of openness and transparency, um, that I'm well known to uh, some of the objectors and the supporters uh, being from Auckland. Um, I've had meetings in the past with some of the objectors and uh, Mr Mayor, who's also present in relation to uh, a matter of antisocial behaviour in the region of Nether Place. Um, at that point in time, Mr Mayor did advise me of his intention to submit the current application, uh, but at that time, um, I made him aware that I was on planning committee and uh, made no comments in respect to the merits or otherwise of this application. Um, I'm also known quite well to Mr Cook, who's also present. We're both uh, colleagues in Mockland Community Association. Um, and the same thing applies. We have never had any discussions in regard to this application. So I feel uh, I'm able to sit in on this panel um, and discuss the application and its merits without having had conversations previously. Thanks, Provost. No, thanks, Councillor Lennox. And we'll ask uh, Craig for just uh, for some guidance on this. Right, thank you, Chair. Obviously, in terms of the code of conduct, it's the duty for every councillor to determine whether or not they feel that it applies um, to them. As members will be aware, um, the code of conduct was changed in December 2021, which essentially introduced a new kind of category in terms of uh, whether or not uh, an elected member should declare or not declare an interest. And quite clearly, the test is normally, is there a connection to a particular um, application? Um, the nature of that connection and whether or not it is um, significant enough that would warrant an elected member to, to formally declare an interest and remove themselves from um, the consideration uh, of that particular item. In coming to a view in that, the uh, test is normally with, would a member of the public sitting in the public benches knowing all the information take the view that a particular councillor shouldn't sit um, and uh, be involved in the consideration or determination of that application? Um, what I would say is that in terms of the changes that came forward in December 2021, essentially a third option became available to councillors from the normal declare or not declare. And that third option was whether in the interests of openness and transparency, um, elected members wanted to raise particular matters, but did so in the knowledge and understanding that it wouldn't affect their ability to sit and consider and determine an application. Therefore, I'm aware 
that Councillor Le what Councillor Lennox is basically saying as well. Um, a number of individuals may be known to him in the interests of openness and transparency. He's raising that before the committee today, but quite clearly he's saying that it would not it's not of such significance um, in terms of that connection that would prevent him from sitting and dealing with this application on its particular planning merits. Um, at the end of the day, it is a matter ultimately for councillors to determine if uh, their compliance with the code, but certainly it is an option that is available to councillors just to raise. I know uh, essentially in this case, Councillor Lennox is saying he knows individuals, but it wouldn't prevent him actually sitting, considering or determining the application and the code does allow for that. Thanks very much, Craig. Thanks for raising that, Wally. Very important, um, but I think we're OK to continue. And I'm going to ask uh, Lynn to uh, explain the hearing procedure, because it is a hearing. Thank you, Provost. The hearing will begin with the Chief Governance Officer or his representative providing an overview of the application. The objectors will then present their objections to the committee and members will have an opportunity to ask questions. Members, please note that this is not to be taken as an opportunity to comment on the merits or otherwise of the planning application. The applicant or the agent will then present in support of the application and again, members will have the opportunity to ask any questions. Again, members, please note that this is not to be taken as an opportunity to comment on the merits or otherwise of the planning application. The hearing will then close and at this stage, officers present will give appropriate clarification on any matters raised and the members will move to determination. Thank you, Provost. Thanks very much, Lynn. Uh, so if that's all understood, we'll just uh, start the proceedings today. So 23rd of June, uh, planning meeting, and the subject is a proposed preschool woodlands nursery with associated paths and restoration of woodland at Woodland to the north of Loudon Street Car Park, Mauchlin. And that's uh, 22 oblique 0690 oblique PP. And we're over to Vare for the introduction. Thank you. Thanks, Chair, and good morning, everybody. Um, before I go on to recommendation and the considerations of the application, I'll run through uh, some slides, first of all, that show the site and the surroundings. Uh, so if you bear with me, I'll just share my screen. Yes, that should come up. Um, hopefully you can all see that OK. Um, the application site is what is outlined here in uh, the thick black line, I think. Um, so it is located to the western side of Mauchlin Town Centre. Um, it is within the conservation area. The conservation area boundary runs along here. Um, Loudon Street Car Park is located to this area. I'll maybe just zoom in a little bit so that you can see a bit clearly, a bit more clearly, if I can see this myself. The screen's so small here that I can't even see this. Sorry, I can't see the screens, <laughs> even zoom in on this. Um, but basically we've got a nether, nether, uh, nether walk, which is located here. This is a residential area in East Park Avenue. Um, Loudon Street Car Park, as I said, uh, Loudon Street, which long, runs along to the south. Um, there are various accesses from the north. Um, this is a private road, which I believe was the original access to Nether Place House. Um, Nether Place House was originally located in the area, I think, where uh, Nether Walk is now. Um, and the application site is within a woodland, which was part of the grounds of uh, Nether House. Um, so there are various accesses, um, pedestrian accesses that come from the town centre. Um, we've got a footpath that runs from the now uh, as well, and uh, also from Loudon Street Car Park. So you can see as well within the site, it shows uh, the line of some informal paths that are within it as well. And uh, the footprint of a, a ruined stable building. So this just shows an aerial view of the site and you can see the wooded nature of it. Um, you can also see the line of the footpaths that run through it and to the north 
and also to the east, Loudon Street Car Park here, and Nether Walk and East Park Avenue here. <clears throat> Uh, uh, this uh, shows a tree survey plan that was submitted with the application. Um, so it shows uh, the proposals. Well, this actually this slide just shows the existing trees. So the the different colours show the categorise categorisation of the trees, which range from A class, which is the the most important type of tree, to a uh, U class, which is uncategorised. Uh, you can see as well the ruined stable building here. Um, I should also mention at this point that the, all of the trees within the site uh, and within this boundary are protected by a tree preservation order. So this is the proposals to remove trees. So you can see that the green uh, shows the existing trees and the trees will be remain will be retained and the outlines which are shown in either amber or black are the trees which are to be removed. So in total, there are a, a, there are a total of 18 trees which would be removed as part of the proposal. Um, most of those are onto categorised trees uh, with um, a few, I think uh, we've got a B class tree and a C class tree which would be removed. Um, and I think that the black outline is one of those, and this one here as well. I hope you can see my cursor OK. Um, so the other proposals with the woodland are to um, remove some of the inv invasive species that are there, uh, ivy and rhododendron primarily, uh, and also to enhance some of the woodland by replacement tree planting and provision of some uh, wildflower planting as well. So this plan shows the site plan, um, the outline of the, the buildings and the footpaths. Um, so they are arranged within this area with the, the intention to minimise the tree loss as far as possible. They are um, sited on sort of pad foundations, sort of a lightweight type structures, which helps to reduce the impact on the retained trees by meaning that the, there is no need to actually cut into the roots or to, to, to provide foundations as such. Um, you can see here the line of the footpaths. These are the proposed um, improved footpaths uh, and these lead also to um, the, the western part of the woodland where there is a planning permission for uh, a housing development within this area. <clears throat> uh, also, in this area, there is a proposed access. At the moment, there is a, a small access that leads into the woods, uh, and the proposal is to replace this with a shared surface type arrangement um, with staff car parking and turning. It's also proposed that there will be an um, automated gate uh, barrier here, which will prevent general access to this uh, uh, general vehicular access, so that it's restricted to servicing and staff only. Uh, so this plan shows the proposed office building. Um, you can see the sort of small scale flat roofed um, timber type lightweight structure that it is. <clears throat> And these are the classrooms. So the classrooms to the right hand side, uh, you get two here, which I believe have a capacity for 16 children in each. Uh, and the staff room and office building, which is to the left hand side of the, the picture there. Uh, and this shows a section through the site, the existing and proposed. And moving on to some photographs, um, this is the existing access adjacent to 23 Nether Walk, which I referred to previously. Um, and this is where it's proposed to form a shared surface uh, vehicular access for service vehicles and staff, um, which would have a barrier at this location. Um, we did get an improvement to this um, through uh, with the agreement of Ayrshire Rose Alliance to allow this road to be narrowed from its original proposal and for it to be a shared surface, which reduces the impact on the trees. And this is another view, just looking into the woodland from the end of the access. 
Uh, this is looking from East Park Avenue, where there is a, a kind of pinch point um, looking towards Loudoun Street Car Park and the horse chestnut tree, which wouldn't be affected by the proposals. And looking from Loudoun Street Car Park towards that tree and towards East Park Avenue. Um, another view of the car park, um, you'll see within the report that there was a survey that was undertaken of this car park to show its capacity. Um, ARA are content with the results of that, which show that there is capacity for to allow for uh, parents or guardians to drop off uh, children at the nursery. Uh, another view of the car park and the backdrop of the trees and these trees would not be affected by the proposals. Uh, this is one of the footpaths that leads from Loudoun Street Car Park into uh, the site. And looking back up the steps that go up to the car park. And one of the footpaths that leads to the site from the Loudoun Street Car Park, I think. <clears throat> and uh, this site for the proposed nursery buildings would be kind of to the left of this photo. Um, there is there are some more clear areas, um, so it's proposed that it's it would be located within those areas to minimise impact on the trees. And this is looking towards uh, the houses at Netherwalk, the side and back of them, the fences that run along the back of the woodland. And one of the, the footpaths or junctions, I think the one to the right, uh, leads up to Nether Place, um, the Garden. private, yeah, yeah please Nether Place Gardens. And the one to the left um, heads west, I think, towards, um, towards the stables, yes. And looking uh, to the back of the houses on Nether Walk, again, and again. And the footpath again, which goes towards the west of the site. It's one which is proposed for uh, improvement. Uh, again, looking to the back of Nether Walk houses. Um, this shows the area of the ruined stables. You can see the kind of stonework, um, what's left of it behind the, the tree. Um, this is just um, an example of where there is some antisocial behaviour um, evident within the woods. And looking back, this is looking back towards the site uh, with the stable building to the left hand side of the, the footpath there. And this is one of the links which exists towards the town centre. Um, it's a footpath link only. But again. Uh, this is a kind of rough footpath that leads up to Nether Place, uh, Nether Place Gardens. And this is Nether Place itself, uh, as I see it as a private road, uh, and the uh, it's assisted living accommodation which is being constructed to the right hand side of the photo. And this is looking back down from Nether Place uh, down towards the uh, footpath which goes towards the application site and in the woods. So, as summarised within the conclusions of the report at page 59, the application is recommended for approval. It's considered that the provision of the nursery at this location has a benefit of being close to and accessible from the town centre, which will reduce the number of car trips required, bring benefits to the town centre and generally provide a facility for the community. The main considerations with the proposal are the impact on the woodland, impacts due to noise and disturbance and public access. With, as considered within the report, these impacts are considered to have been mostly addressed by the applicant within the proposal itself and can be sufficiently mitigated through the implementation of conditions attached to the report. In terms of the Woodland Condition 34 details the implementation of tree protection measures for retained trees. Conditions 27 and 28 require full details of an implementation of landscaping, including replacement tree planting, footpath improvements and other biodiversity enhancement measures. 
In terms of access and traffic matters, the content of ERA's response should be noted. ERA's main concern, uh, which is also the concern of some of the representations, uh, is the impact on, on street parking on Netherwalk and East Park Avenue. However, noting the expectation that a proportion of the trips would be on foot, the residual impact of this can be mitigated through this submission and impl implementation of a travel plan to encourage sustainable modes of travel to the facility, including walking. In addition, to a nursery, in addition, a nursery travel pack uh, would include information on sustainable travel measures, and this would be distributed to parents and guardians. Uh, condition 8 would also prevent general access to the nursery by vehicles uh, through the provision of an automated barrier. Uh, a construction management plan is also required by condition 14. Uh, this will help to minimise impacts of construction traffic. Um, condition 33 requires the provision of signage and uh, to discourage traffic from entering the residential streets at East Park Avenue and Netherwalk. So, Overall, the application is recommended for approval on the basis of it providing a community facility in an accessible location designed to minimise the impact on the woodland and maintain public access. As noted, the woodland forms part of the conservation area, but it's not considered that there would be an overall impact to the area and the woodland character would remain. Although the impacts of traffic are an important consideration, the nursery would be located at an area which is accessible by foot and thus it is expected that a significant portion of the trips would be made this way. The provision of a travel plan and travel pack is intended to encourage sustainable forms of travel and for the remaining trips made by car measures to encourage the use of Loudoun Street car park rather than surrounding streets are proposed. Uh, it's considered that the proposal is in accordance with the development plan, the material considerations, which include the consultation responses and representations made, have been taken into account, uh, but there are none which outweigh, outweigh the provisions of development, development plan and recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thanks very much, Vary. Uh, folks, um, we're going, that was part one of the hearing procedure here today. Part two is where the objectors or their agents uh, have a chance to put forward their case. Uh, we've got four people have asked to speak, and I'm going to propose that each person gets five minutes. And after that five minutes, um, members will have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, we'll do that after each person, and then uh, there'll be a catch up at the end, and then we'll go into the next process. So may I ask Mr. Alan Cook uh, to come forward, please? And um, Robert will show you, uh, just speak into the microphone. So when you're ready, um, you've got five minutes, Mr. Cook. Good morning. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me this opportunity to speak to speak about my objections in relation to the plan application for a wooden nursery in Mothlin. My objections are based on the proposal, proposed location in relation to road safety, increased traffic within Loudoun Street Car Park, biodiversity and village centre impact. The initial report by DBA consultants for the agents covering a case study for Loudoun Street Car Park states that there were 45 available spaces. The subsequent updated report of January 2023 reduces this number to 38. Both figures are wrong as the current available spaces within the car park, excluding the two bays for electric charging, is 33. For clarity, the current Burnsby and staff do not use the Loudoun Street car park. They park in the private car park in Robert Burns Place and, and utilise the reserved centre stain places. It should also be considered that the proposed expansion by East Ayrshire Council of EV charging points within Loudoun Street car park will further reduce the number of available spaces to members of the public. I am astounded that Ayrshire Roads Alliance, who initially refused by email of 15th of December 2022, stating the use of the existing car park would not be suitable, have now indicated no objection to the revised proposal, which only provides for five spaces for staff adjacent to the nursery, with users of the service still to use the Loudoun Street car park. No mention is made for access of emergency service vehicles. I therefore can only assume that this is via Loudoun Street car park also. Mention is made within the DBA report of the use of Loudoun Street car park for Robert Burns Academy pupil, up, pupil pick up and drop off points, but not for minibuses pick up and dropping off from outlying areas. I have witnessed school buses having to undertake several attempts to turn within the car park in busy periods due to the existing layout. I have photographic evidence of this here if you should require it. 
As a result, these coaches completely encroach on the existing pavement, placing vulnerable pedestrians at great daily risk. This is prior to increase in use, which would result should its application be granted. The designated bus areas are used out with school pickup, drop off by private hire vehicles, which would not be included in a windy survey, survey using NPR during the winter. Parking within the village is a premium. When a funeral is being held at nearby church which does not have parking, this will be frustrated when the proposed pedestrian crossing by Ayrshire Road Alliance is installed in Loudoun Street to improve road safety and will result in the loss of up to three on-street parking spaces, which again has not been mentioned by Ayrshire Road Alliance or the applicant. The single pavement within the car park at its junction with Loudoun Street is narrow due to its layout, the incursion of hedging and overhanging trees from Mockland Castle. This currently poses a significant risk to the current level of pedestrians. Ayrshire Roads Alliance recommends travel packs to be issued promoting alternative modes of transport, yet fails to mention that Mockland has no dedicated or shared cycling routes, fails to mention that it is illegal to ride a bike on a footpath under section 129 of the Road, Tr the Road Scotland Act 1984. There are no barriers to separate young children from vehicle traffic and no safe walking areas are currently within or proposed within the Loudoun Street car park, which increases the risk significantly to young children by running into the path of vehicles. The applicant indicates willingness to install signage encouraging users not to use nearby residential streets. My 19 years experience as a road policing officer within Police Scotland has shown me that signage of this nature is negligible to null effect on road users. The proposed Woodland Nursery purports to increase the number of preschool places available within Mockland. 11 40 hours of preschool are available to each three and four year old. This proposal simply relocates the 32 places which is currently provided by Burns Bairns at Mockland Community Facility, the Centre Stain, made possible with expenditure of 330,000 by East Ayrshire Council. It is assumed in the application that the parents and carers will want to spread the entitlement across the year rather than term time as currently available. No mention is made to the views of East Ayrshire Council early years or the care inspector regarding this change and its impact on facilities. The impact of relocation could result in the loss of the community facility to the population of Mockland and leave an empty building in the centre of the village. One minute, Mr Cook. Therefore, the application does have a detr detrimental impact on the village. I remain dubious as to the applicant's commitment to biodiversity, given the previous felling of mature trees and destroying the natural habitat of wildlife within this site. As a community councillor, I am grateful for the partnership working with East Ayrshire Council in granting TPOs for the remaining trees, and I would hope this would prevent future felling by the applicant as contained within the application. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much for being uh, within the time. Uh, members, I'm going to open it up for any questions for Mr Cook. I've got no questions. Thank you very much, Mr Cook. Uh, the next objector is Mr James Goodwin. And again, Mr Goodwin, uh, five minutes. And uh, OK, five minutes. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, first of all, I uh, just want to say, in, in, in principle, I think the, the village needs a, a, a nursery. Uh, the two objections I've got, the first one is that there's been no contact between uh, the planners and myself about the, 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 the use of the road down the side of 23 Nether Walk, um, which the, the, the tarmac side of it is privately owned. There's been no communication at all there to say anything about that. Um, the, the second objection I've got around it is this, the, the, the footpath um, coming from the side and going round the back of the properties. Um, in the plan, I believe it's got uh, the fencing is near on knee high. We have had some security issues around the area um, where houses are getting broken into using the back way in. Um, and to me, that pathway then has just given them an easier access to jump across. Whereas I think if I, a more appropriate fencing was put up, that could give some kind of sense of security for us, um, for the for the residents in Nether Walk. That's it. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Goodwin. Members, any questions?
We're OK. Thank you very much. The uh, next objector is Mr Harry Green. And the same again, Mr Green. Yeah, my name's Harry Green. Um, I stay in number 21 in our walk. Uh, and I've been there since I built the house from a plot cell to his um, tiger Miko in the 1970s. So I have a fair history of knowledge or whatever of what this estate's all about, you know. Um, so um, obviously Jim stays next door to me. Uh, there's also Libby who stays on the other side of me. Uh, and across the road, uh, Claire, and Robert at number 12. I believe the four of us, our houses, are on the, the front line and an impact on what's going to be happening here. Right? So, um, first first of all, I'm going to maybe argue against some of the other points that were raised. The service access, turning area, and staff parking, right? We now have five staff parking areas areas instead of none. The original plans, there was none. We now have a large vehicle area be beside number 23 in our walk. A lot has been mentioned about antisocial behaviour behind the houses, but there's also a lot of house history regarding antisocial behaviour in the area at the side of number 23. The extent that is the previous owner to Jim went to court twice because of youth knocking his fence down, battering his garage. And so that is a big concern if we're going to create a big turning, a turning area in five parking places. It's just becoming an open tarmac area for the use altogether again. You know, so it's just another play area for them. It's OK during the day, but at night, that's when all the trouble starts and at the weekends. Uh, uh, so... Why can't this whole area be created by a, you know, if you're talking about just an, an alternative to be considered, uh, the access from the car park, you know, the Loudoun car park, why can't there not be a, a slip road down from the car park behind the tall trees at the bottom to, uh, and around the back and back out as a turning area for deliveries, etc. right? There is two access points into the car park from a house already in the car park, you know, so it's not out of the ordinary. Also, there's a proposal that uh, the, the pavement, uh, at the top of the, the pavement, uh, the pavement, sorry, that leads from Nether Walk, East Park, up to the car park. You saw a picture of it. I'll just mention again, that's a disaster. The flooding at the top of that happens constantly. People with kids with prams, etc., have can't get around it. We have to get around the side and and swim up to get past it. The proposal was to bring the, the pavement down from that car, that uh, pavement down under the oak, the oak tree, not the oak tree, chestnut tree. You saw a picture of that chestnut tree hangs over a single lane part of the road. It's not a double lane. It's just a single lane access. Lorries and everything can buy that are back on the top to these branches hanging over. And the proposal is to put a pavement underneath all those branches. So uh, I assume they're going to get the OK to, to, not, to cut down all those branches before they can put in a pavement. That pavement is to continue along the side of the other, uh, number 23 across from number 23 through the turn through the car parks five car park spaces the turning area into another path that will lead on to the main path so just one minute mr green oh sorry one minute. right um so it, I, I i'm saying that is is it's ludicrous you know to create that path they could create the same type of path along the back of the the big tall trees at the bottom of the car park along the, the back of those trees to connect to the, the path you saw with the steps down, which you can complete the circle. There doesn't need to be a path going behind, let's say, the 23. Um, 
So I think that's most of it. Uh, just one other quick point. I was the treasurer of the Nether Place Road Fund, uh, latterly, and some of you might have known, uh, for 10 years uh, we battled with McTaggart and Meikle, ARA and the Council to resolve this, a 60 year issue regarding the, the non adoption of the roads in the area. Uh, this was resolved in October 2021 20, after the resident set a proposal and the roads were adopted. There was some repair work done to the pavements in East Park, but in general, the roads and other than Nether Walk are in poor condition. Through traffic to the nursery, especially construction and delivery wheel, will only make them worse. It is also worth noting that the speed bumps on these roads do not conform to ARA requirements, and road, the road between East Park and Nether Walk is a narrow one lane piece of road. So I'm grave concerned about that. Uh, finally, uh, McTaggart and Miko bought that Nether Place way back in the 1950s, I believe. Uh, we built, uh, sold the pots off. We get, we get. Uh, uh, just sum up, please. Uh, 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 just one little thing. We, we got the, bought the plots and built our houses in that road in, in 1970s. We've had six for 60 years. McTaggart and Miko did nothing with that ground, and it was left going. Trees have grown from small things to large things. So, what guarantee are we going to get when we're going to get another 60 years of non-maintenance? Love it. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, members, any questions for uh, Mr Green? Just we'll see if there's any questions, Mr Green. No bother. No, no, it's absolutely fine. No questions. Thank you very much. And finally, Mr Alan Gray. No, it's just the same, Mr Gray. Uh, firstly, thanks, uh, committee, for letting me say my wee piece, and I'll be as brief as I can. I'm going to just put it into small points. Most of them have been already, so I'm just going to virtually reiterate what's just been said. Uh, my first point uh, regarding the parking facilities on Loudoun Street and the car park, I think these are going to prove to be wholly inadequate for the facility. Uh, that's causing a massive congestion in an already busy area. Um, also, in, in the Nether Walk, uh, regards Nether Walk, Nether Place Gardens, we're also going to see an increase in not only uh, vehicle, but footfall. Uh, I myself live in the Nether Place Gardens end of the, 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 the proposed development, if you like, uh, which you saw in your pictures there. It has a private lane coming down, which was the old gateway entrance to the old house. This, is, as you quite rightly said, is a, is a privately maintained road. Uh, backing onto your new uh, building that you're building there for the community. Um, th there is no lighting in this area whatsoever. Um, so it, it, I, I, can see, I can see it coming as it's going to eventually be almost maybe a, a bit of a rat run for people that can't park down in the town. They'll think, ah, we'll shoot down this little lane, abandon my car here, and then we'll leg it down that little path that you saw and get the kids into space. And and it's for the, the houses there will be just a nightmare because it's only a single track road. You'd abandon a car, that's it. Nobody can get down, no emergency vehicles, no refuse, nothing. Um as I say, you you're also going to get that increase in footfall into this marshy area and then you're going to get litter. And we're going I mean I can go on and on about that, which I shouldn't, but I, I think that's reiterating what I'm saying there, you're quite clear on. Uh, point two, uh, regarding the, the forest or the wooded green area, has it already been cut at the nether place uh, end? And this area now is going to be, I know it's only going to be a small amount of trees, 18, I think you said, it, it's, it's, it's going to modify that last piece of green that we've got in the middle of Mockland yet again. And, and and this is is it can only affect the natural beauty and and, and the, the 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 wildlife in in that area, which I think is going to be totally detrimental and a large loss to the to the community. And my last point um, is there's also also going to be a great level in the noise 
especially for the people in that area that bought possibly bought their houses at that time and built their houses because it was such a nice, quiet part of the town. Now we're going to get that. And I know we, we're looking at uh, moving the children and all that, and I've, I've, I've got great respect for that. And that's a great idea. But I think we've got to also consider there is going to be a big difference to the, the people that live in this area for the, for the noise. Um, so due to all of these facts and what's already been mentioned, these are my objections, but uh, thank, thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. Uh, Mr Gray, we're going to open up for any questions to members. No, we're OK. Thank you very much, Mr Gray. Thank you. Thanks for being within the time. Right, folks, the next part of the hearing procedure is the applicant uh, and other agents will speak for a, a maximum of uh, 15 minutes or such other period as the committee may agree. So I'd like to ask um, Mr Mayor, uh, you've got 15 minutes to speak uh, in support of the application. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Panel. Um, my name is Alistair Mayor of State of Architecture. We are acting agent on this application. I am actually also the client as a director of Felix Homes Limited as well. Um, the application before us today for the erection of a Woodlands preschool nursery within the Woodland directly north of Lowne Street Car Park in Mochland. The ethos of a forest school is based on a fundamental respect for children and young people and for their capacity to instigate, test and maintain curiosity in the wood and the world around them. It believes in children's rights to play, the right of access to the outdoors and in particular a woodland environment. The right of access, risk and the vibrant reality of the natural world and the right to experience a healthy range of emotions through all the challenges of social interaction to build a resilience that will enable continued and creative engagement with their peers and their potential. Forest School is based more in the process of learning that is in the content, more in the how than the what. This means that genuine Forest School practices step boldly out of the shadow and limitations of planned activities and ventures collaboratively into the realms of the unplanned, unexpected and ultimately unlimited. Children and young people are given encouragement to direct their own learning. This often requires catalyzing the power of the forest school leader, either through stimulating play in the outdoors or through scaffolding a child's learning, but mostly through simply observing how children are in the outdoors. Significantly, and at many levels, a woodland environment is central in supporting this very dynamic approach to learning. The passage of time from the changing of the seasons to the con con contemplation of ancient trees, the dynamic nature of an outdoor environment, an infinite source of smells, textures, sounds and tastes, a range of visual stimuli from near to far, high to low, very big to very small, and infinite layers of historical, cultural, spiritual and mythological significance that speak to of our deep relationship with trees and the woodland through the ages. Our vision is to create a class-leading facility within Mockland that provides unparalleled levels of care and opportunity for the next generation of children growing up within the town. The proposals are based around a small selection of four timber-clad buildings with living green roofs, two units to the west of the site house the two classrooms, with central connection to toilet facilities, unit to the south house the main office and reception area, with the northern unit housing facilities to include kitchen and staff room. The central area between the buildings was a small timber fence to its perimeter to create an enclosed playground. The wider woodland will be ex explored and used for learning in smaller groups led by nursery staff. The proposals aim to improve and maintain the existing woodland with the removal of invasive species and a select number of trees which have been identified as requiring removal within the tree survey report. I believe there's 18 trees to get removed and 16 of them, regardless of this application, are recommended to get removed for basically health and safety reasons due to the ill health of the trees. So there's only actually two trees that are uh, removed as part of the application really. This will allow the existing woodland to thrive, creating a more accessible open woodland, which will not only benefit the proposed nursery, but will remain as public open woodland for the benefit of the wider community. During the early design stage, careful consideration was given to the surrounding property and existing woodland itself. A 25 metre build exclusion zone was drafted around the neighbouring properties to protect the levels of amenity. The tree survey also formed the basis of the design, with the building situated in and around the trees, whilst minimising impact on the existing root protection zones. 29 letters of support were received for the application with great enthusiasm for a new purpose built uh, North facility. It's a shame some of the, the supporters can't come and speak and it's only objectors, but there's 29 letters of support for it. Um, so it shows that it's it's something that's, that's sought after in the in the village, in the town. There's been no objection from consultees subject to relevant conditions that we're happy to adhere to. And the proposals are benefited by the central location within the town. Been only a 15 minute walk from the post nursery to the fullest houses within the town. The location next to the existing car park also makes for easy pick-up and drop-offs. 
The car park was surveyed and is shown to have adequate capacity to facilitate the new nursery. We've also included the five um, staff parking and the, the service road. Mr Cook mentioned about service facilities and there'll be no service facilities for, for the emergency services, but that service road is exactly what that's for, um, for bin lorries, ambulances, fire engines, whatever, whatever may be required, as well as the, the off-road parking for the, for the staff. Um, that being said, the ethos behind the nursery is for outdoor play and adventure, and it's encouraging people to be outdoors, specifically children to be outdoors. This includes active travel. This will be actively promoted and encouraged to the children. After discussions with planning, it was agreed that a secure cycle storage should be provided and is agreeable and shall form part of the conditions from ERA. Parking, access and vehicles are one of the main concerns from the local residents. I understand this. That's why we've done our best to, to carry out these, these reports and surveys and uh, design the staff car parking into it to minimise any impact or as little impact as it has on, on the, the surrounding neighbours. The staff and service access were provided from their walk. This will include a barrier across the service uh, road, together with signs that junction of Finder Crescent and Air Road, with wording to be agreed along the lines of service access only to Woodlands Nursery, no pick-up, drop-off. There's only so much you can do to deter um, these people um, from dropping off at these places. People have said about the pinch point in the road as well, and I think the nature of the, the road itself, to me, Common sense tell you it's going to be a lot easier to drive up there into the car park, up the main road, into the car park, as opposed to turning into that private residential street and driving around about narrow roads, pinch points, trying to park when there's already cars parked in driveways. And to me, it'd be easier parking the car park, but you can't, you can't just going to wait and see what happens to people. Uh, all we can do is try to deter it. So uh, we're providing staff car parking to take that away from the car park so there's no additional load on it. Um, the, the the surveys said that there's there's adequate parking there, so we're going with that. Another point raised by objectors is the, the, the destruction of the natural woodland and removal of habitat. The proposed nursery is designed carefully to protect the existing woodland. The success of the nursery relies on the natural woodland setting. The tree removal proposals include only two trees, which are not categorised requiring a move within the tree survey report. Compensatory planting for the trees has been agreed and shall be conditioned. There's also other plant for wildflowers, etc., and removing the, the invasive species, which is going to make the woodland habitat a far better place. Um, the proposed removal includes removal of invasive species, road to end that this will have a great positive impact on the woodland, allowing light to the underconnect to enhance the biodiversity with flora and fauna. Again, I was just saying, and the additional some wildflower planting, etc., which is going to encourage the kids to, to study all this stuff. Um, the woodland has been subject to much antisocial behaviour, including fly tipping of garden waste by nearby properties. So there's there's people neighbouring this that are also using it for for things that shouldn't be. Um, it seems to be a, a case that that nobody wants the woodland to be used, but they do want it to be used, just not by other people. Um, it's a bit of, it's not in my backyard. I think with the the kind of impression I'm getting from a lot of it. Um, but what we are planning to do, and what we're hoping to do, is to to clear all these invasive species. Open the woodland under story up. A lot of it just now is really dangerous. So you can't see far. You can see for, you can see five yards in front of you in some bits. Hence a lot of the antisocial behaviour, hiding behind these parts, setting fires. There was actually a fire. I think maybe last week there was a fire set. It was further down the wood before it wasn't actually within this site. But there was fire set within it, um, I believe just a week or so ago in the hot weather. Um, so we're hopeful that by clearing the woodland, making it more accessible and making it more used by the public in general, that there will be less chance of this happening. Albeit, um, one of the gentlemen I think said about it a lot of time, it's at night time, this antisocial behaviour, we can't light up the woodland because of the habitat and we're trying to protect the habitat. We've proposed lighting for the nursery that be on PIRs and on timers so that it's not on throughout the night and it's not causing any, any nuisance to residents or to the wildlife habitat. So there's only so much we can do in terms of that. But if we can make the, the woodland... Um, if we can make it seem better by everybody that's using it, hopefully that will encourage people to to not be vandalising. There's also plans for CCTV on the, the buildings, which again, it can't stop it, but hopefully it'll do something to deter people vandalising it, because there's, there's people watching them on the cameras. Um, it's hoped that the use of the woodland for the nursery will educate the children to be more respectful of their natural habitat and their outdoor classroom. Hopefully, this will spread to their older siblings and in, great, in time, a greater respect and care of the woodland will be adapted by the next generation. 
The application was carefully designed after discussions and small iterations of proposals. The planning department are in full support and recommend approval. The large number of support letters also demonstrate that this is a proposal welcomed by the majority. It's for these reasons I respectfully ask councillors to support the planning officer's recommendations and approve the application. There was a couple of wee points brought up by objectors here that I'd just like to clarify. Um, road safety was one, uh, and it was mentioned about the existing Burns Burns facility at the centre stain. And, uh, and road safety and how this place is not road it's not as safe, which I find that's maybe that's an opinion which I'll agree to disagree. The the road safety in terms of the site at the car park is far superior to the road safety of a site right next to the busy crossroads in the centre of Mockland with kids playing a matter of yards away from an extremely busy road with lorries tanking through the middle of the cross every single day, all hours. So the road safety aspect, we're doing all we can to encourage people away from the busy traffic into the natural woodland where it's a far better habitat for people to live or to learn. Um, there was some said about fences and um, people breaking in through the backs of fences. That's something we can't really we can't really prevent. There's nothing much we can do about that. The fencing we're talking about um, within our application is it's solely just a small play area for kids so they can go out there in larger groups with less uh, supervision. Once they're out with that, if they're out within the wood, there'll also be smaller groups and more supervision. But that fence is basically just a, a small play area for the kids uh, within that. As for the fences, they're deemed as, as private fences. And again, there's not much we can do to, to stop some digging into the woods. Uh, all we can do is hopefully make it a better place, a nicer place. If it's used more, there's less chance of that happening. Um, the the application site equates to roughly a hectare. So the, the question to me really is, it's a hectare of woodland that there is some past in it, but it's, it's underutilised and it could be a lot better. So we do want a, a hectare of woodland that's not great, lots of hot spots for antisocial behaviour. I do want 0.9 hectares of open, well-maintained woodland with accessible links to the wider village good paths and a new class leading nursery facility. I know what I think would be best for the village, um, but that's uh, that's all I've got to say. If anybody's any questions, I'm happy to happy to answer it. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'll open it up to members for questions. Councillor Lennox. Thanks, Provost. Uh, thanks for your presentation, Mr Mayor. Um, good to get clarity on some of those points. Uh, there was just one question from me in respect of the uh, the proposed access in the application. Was any consideration made uh, to have the access from Loudon, Loudon Street Car Park? Um, and if so, why did you decide against uh, that particular any access from the car park? Yes, that was looked at. That was our preferred option. We looked at it. We actually looked at re realigning and adjusting the car park layout in the car park to try and um, improve, not so much improve the parking, but create an access between the, the avenue of trees at the edge of the car park without removing any parking spaces from the car park so we could maintain the number of car parking spaces whilst putting a new access in and getting some parking down there. That wasn't looked favourable upon by the council and the ARA. The, the car park is publicly owned by the council. It is not public road. So we do not have a, a right to connect onto that. So there's lots of legal issues in terms of that because it's not a public public highway. It's actually a public or privately owned by the council car park. So it's not as straightforward to just applying for a new access onto a public road. Um, that was our preferred option. We thought that would be the, the, the best way um, and it would keep everything away from walk. But unfortunately, just due to legalities of the situation, it was not something that we could actually progress with. Um, that was the reason by it. Yeah, it's good to know that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Wally. No other questions so far? Uh, for myself, Mr Mayor, um, please give me some clarification, if you don't mind. Uh, the proposed outline, uh, I know the application that we're talking about today, which includes all the trees that some are going to be cut down, but the, the actual application for the building, uh, what's the security measures around that footprint of the building uh, to make the building safe and the children safe? Around the buildings, we are proposing to put in concealed shutters on windows so that it can be boarded up. 
also security lighting and CCTV cameras. We're not looking at putting up three feet, three meter high barbed wire fences. It takes away from the whole nature of the place. We want to leave it as open woodland. So all, all we're planning is to to secure the buildings with shuttering, so that all all door all those windows can be shuttered over, uh, and then there'd be CCTV cameras um, and secured line just to to try and deter um, any antisocial behaviour or any problems with it. Um, it's as much as I think we can we can do without building a, a fortress round about it. But the whole ethos behind the woodland nursery is to be in the woodland and building a great big razor wire fence round about it. It's not that. That's fine. That's, thank you very much. Members, I can see no other questions. So we'll bring the discussion part to a close with objectors and the proposer. We're going to move on to the uh, sixth part of the process. Thanks very much, Mr Mayor. And at this stage, uh, the planners are going to uh, answer some of the points that have been raised and then um, we'll have a discussion after that. So over to Vary. Thanks, Chair. Um, I would say as well that it might be as well to have ARA comments on some of the matters that were raised. Um, but I think just as a kind of general point um, in relation to the issues regarding traffic congestion and, and concerns about that, um, it should be noted that it is a fairly relatively small scale facility. Um, the total capacity is for 64 children, but that would be over two sessions, I understand. So it would be 32 in each session. Um, so it's, I mean, that's a sort of classroom size, I believe, for a, a primary school. Um, so, I mean, there will be um, some disruption, um, noise, and some traffic issues as a result of that, which we, you know, we're, we're not um, denying that there, there would be. Um, there will be people that, that probably will try to drop off children on the surrounding streets. Um, it should be noted, though, that they are public roads, um, you know, so there isn't any, there's no, it's not illegal for people to do so. Uh, but we do believe that the mitigation proposals, uh, both from the applicant and within the conditions, um, do enough to, to mitigate for that and to prevent that as far as possible and to direct people um, primarily to, to go on foot. And as noted by Mr Mayor, it is very accessible by foot. Um, I think he said that there was, a, it's about 15 minute walk from the, the a furthest away house in Mochlin. So we would expect a, a, a reasonable proportion of people to walk to the facility um, without any encouragement anyway. Um, other matters, um, I don't think any road safety issues have been identified as such by ARA. Um, it's nothing that's, that's been identified in a response anyway. Um, yeah, other yeah, biodiversity. Um, we do acknowledge that there will be an impact on the trees. Um, some of the trees will be removed as a result. Um, but we do have conditions which will be um enforced to ensure that the a uh, uh, replacement scheme comes in, and uh, that's suitable and that there is um implemented on site. Um, so we're we're fairly happy with the the. Uh, compensatory proposals in respect of biodiversity and, and tree planting. Um, the road, I think uh, the objector, one of the objectors noted the road to the side of 23 Nether Walk and the pinch point at that location um, and a uh, footway. I'll, I'll maybe just um, show another slide um, if I just can share this with you again. Um, okay, so this is the area we're talking about. So this is a pinch point here on East Park Avenue um, where my cursor is just now. And um, that's, I don't, unfortunately there isn't another photograph that kind of shows us this, this, this area so well, but this is a horse chestnut tree that was being referred to as well. In the moment, there isn't a footway that runs along here. The original proposal that was submitted did show a footway along this location, um, as well as the, the wider access roads. Um, however, that was amended 
quite late on in the, the consideration of the application uh, by the applicant and it's now proposed to remove the footway uh, and this is primarily because of the impacts that we thought that it would have on the horse chestnut tree which is quite an important uh, tree here um, and the the other improvements are to, to narrow this access um, service access which will further reduce the impact or any potential impact on trees. Um, other matters raised, uh, we were talking about another potential for another access coming in from Loudon Street car park. Um, I mean that might resolve some issues but then it will it will result in issues of more trees being felled um, likely along the boundary of this car park. So um, I think sometimes it's difficult to kind of get the perfect solution to anything. Um, there is also a condition which requires a long term maintenance of the woodland. Um, and a So a lot, of, a lot of the issues with regard to car parking and Loudon Street car park, I will, I will pass over to ERA, so I'll leave that just now. Um, and I note as well that there are some concerns about this of being the last remaining green space in Mocklin. Um, I do understand that it is it's an attractive woodland um, and um, it will result in some impacts to trees, as we've already outlined. Uh, it could be said that there will be enhancements because the footpaths will be improved. It should hopefully lead to some improvements to public access as well. Um, the area isn't actually safeguarded for public open space within the local development plan or within the, the future local development plan too. So just to note that point. Um, there isn't really anything more from me, I don't think. I don't know whether Marion's got anything more to add, his case officer. Thanks, Harry. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> it's only just uh, very caught most of the comments there, but it was just to say that uh, in terms of noise impact, environmental health came back to us and didn't have any objections in terms of noise out with the usual standard conditions for hours of um, operation, so, so on and so forth. But nothing out of the ordinary. Thanks. Okay, hey, thanks, guys. Uh, Kevin? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, uh, our officers, in terms of, of road safety and and uh, the mitigation that's been put in um, by the developer, we're satisfied that the car park has got sufficient capacity and turnaround. However, um, we will monitor that. Um, and in terms of the the existing road network, it's a public road network, um, and it has sufficient capacity. There may be issues with parents who um, go around and, and try and drop off at the, at the nursery access. Again, that's something that your Road Alliance would have to uh, monitor. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Kevin. Members, any questions here? No, we're OK. Just one for me, Kevin, uh, and that was about the the electric charging points, uh, what proposals have we got for Loudon Car Park in terms of the future for uh, taking away capacity if there's cars sitting there for hours par, uh, charging? For you, Chair, at, at this moment in time, our EV strategy for um, um, East Ayrshire's network is uh, in its infancy, and we are looking at uh, you know um, a whole range of, of different types of, of chargers that we would be putting in. If we were putting in rapid chargers, you would only be there for a period of 20 minutes. And that's what we would be looking at for car parks to maintain turnaround. Thank you, Chair. Well, that's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, any more from officers, Craig? <coughs> Nothing here. Members, last call. No. More questions at this stage? Yeah, Councillor Lennox, Chair. Councillor Lennox. Uh, thanks, Provost. It, it, it's just come to mind in terms of uh, maybe a question for Kevin for Ayrshire Roads Alliance. Um, my question to Mr Mayor earlier was around access 
potential access from Loudon Street car park into the proposed development is is that something that could be uh, a workaround could be made uh, in terms of gaining access from Loudon Street car park uh, or is it something that would be uh, completely dismissed? Through you, Chair, it's, it's not something um, that Airs of Roads Alliance would uh, support. Thank you, Chair. And just on the back of the question, um, obviously, members, we have the application before us and um, we require to consider that application in its current form um, on its planning merits. Um, uh, rather than consider what may or may not be other alternative uh, solutions. No, no, that's fair, but that, that, that could be encapsulated maybe in a continuance um, to get more information for that. But you're absolutely right, it's, it's what we're dealing with today. Uh, members, no further questions? That's OK. Uh, folks, at this point, we're going to the committee decision. So I'm opening this up uh, to a committee for any discussion or any points that you need to um, uh, clarify for yourself uh, before we go to uh, a decision. Members? Councillor Lennox. Councillor Lennox. Uh, thanks, Provost. I feel as if I'm the only one doing the talking today. Uh, You'd be scanning up listening to me. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say that um, in principle, I don't have any objections to uh, the proposed woodland uh, nursery in that particular location. Um, I tend to agree with the developer in the sense that uh, it's probably going to approve the amenity of that area. Um, and it'd be nice to see some ongoing maintenance within that part of another place, uh, which I think has been lacking over the years. Uh, maybe 60 years, as somebody has already mentioned. Um, it might even help address some of the antisocial behaviour issues that we've seen uh, down in that part of the village. Uh, so that, from that perspective, I've got absolutely uh, no problem with the woodland nursery in that particular location. Uh, location. Um, my main concern, uh, the one aspect of this application as uh, the access point for me. Um, the access, the proposed access is from residential streets. Um, we've seen pictures of the uh, the narrow lane that is currently e existing. Um, I don't see any, uh, the problem for me is the fact that um, you're going a runabout way to get to a location uh, if you're if you're taking a car or vehicles in there, that ideally for me the uh, the the access point should be in the Loudon Street car park. Um, I mean, it's clearly been stated that uh, the intention will be for folk that are dropping off care parents and carers that are dropping off uh, wains at that particular location are going to use the car park. And when the car park starts to get busy, which it does on a regular occasion, um, as has been already been mentioned with funerals or functions in uh, the local hotel, uh, they're going to start using those residential streets. Once they, once they see that they kind of get into the car park, they'll start using those residential streets. Uh, I've got no doubt about that. Um, in terms of the the conditions that have been laid out, uh, travel park and uh, the travel plan. Let's not be lulled into a false sense of secu security in terms of uh, the walk. Let's walk walk to the to the nursery. the The sad reality is that even though we had a great spell of weather here, the the weather in this country is uh, inclement at the best of times. Um, and the minute it starts raining, folk get into their cars. And as right, has rightly been said, there's, there's very limited space within that car park. And to have 
potentially uh, three pick up and drop off times during the day in a car park that's currently used by commercial vehicles, uh, public vehicles alike, I think uh, is going to is going to store up problems for the future. The initiatives. The point I'm making is the initiatives to to encourage people to walk to walk to the nursery. They haven't worked at the primary school. The primary school is constantly uh, there's an issue there with traffic, with folk uh, picking up wains and cars, and they're parked all over the place. And it's a constant battle to try and encourage people to walk their ways to school. So I don't see that the the initiatives are going to be successful, quite frankly. Uh, I hate to say it, but you, you just can't get folk out of their cars. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating what's been said by uh, Kevin and the Ursula Roads Alliance in, in terms of it not being an option for the access point to be in the Loudoun Street car park, but I think the application in its current state um, is only storing up problems for the future. And I think if we want the Woodland Nursery to be a success, which I think everybody in the village would want, or the majority of people would want, then let's get it right at the outset. Um, rather than putting approving an application um, that's potentially going to cause uh, issues with congestion and traffic in the future. Um, to be honest, Provost, I'm, I'm reluctant to uh, make any move to reject the application um, because I say I, I do support it, but I just think um, in its current format, it's not quite right. And I think we need to do everybody justice, I think we, did, we need to do it properly at the outset. And I think it needs, requires further discussion. Thanks, Provost. No, no, thanks, uh, Wally. Um, folks, is there anybody else uh, that, that would like to impart some thoughts? I can't see Andy online. Um, the, the, the proposal's here and it's... Pre oh, there's Councillor Watts. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, to, to be completely honest, I mean, I can see where uh, Councillor Lennox is coming from. Um, I think the looking at the entrance way, um, it's extremely narrow. I think there's, it could potentially cause um, a build-up um, and traffic congestion, especially I do know that area as well. It's not that far away from the uh, main A76 um, and it's bad enough when cars are going in and out for um, drop off for the school and obviously the bus pickups. The other concern I have um, and you know it, it's not probably something that's unusual for myself, um, the volume of trees that seem to be needed to be removed for the uh, nursery to be put into place, especially looking at the plan when a lot of those trees aren't even in the actual area where the nursery is being built, looking at the plan uh, that we had on screen. Um, and I have grave concerns about that. Um, so there, there are a few of my thoughts at the moment, Provost. No, thanks, Neil. Uh, Councillor Barton. Councillor Barton, you're on mute. There's always one, isn't there? And it's me this time. But thanks, Chair. Uh, I'd like to thank Councillor Lennox for that local knowledge about the kind of issues around the parking. And for me, I know we had the option of a site visit before, but ha having heard Councillor Lennox's words, I, I wouldn't mind going to actually have a look and maybe ask for a continuation of some sort to allow us to go and view it. No, no, thanks very much for that. It absolutely is an option. Um, folks, we can decide that today. Um, there's a lot of information uh, that's coming in and 
I think the feeling, uh, 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 including uh, some of the objectors that are not against the application, it's how we apply the application, uh, and, and main part being uh, access uh, vehicular and uh, pedestrian. Councillor Mackay. Uh, thank you very much, Provost. I'm very happy and I have listened intently. Uh, I know the area and the car parking well. I have listened intently to all of the discussion. Um, I have to say I am minded to support the application as presented. That's great. We've had a, 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 a proposal for support <laughs> of the recommendations. Uh, at this point, do we have a seconder? Councillor Crawford, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'll second that. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any other alternative proposals? I think Councillor Lennox had intimated about continuation. I'd be happy to propose a continuation, Provost, um, if, if someone would like to second that. Yeah, but, but we need a continuation on the basis of uh, more information. More information, a site visit, I think, would yeah, be appropriate okay. for the members that are not familiar with the area. No, we have we have to give a reason, uh, and thanks for that. I see Councillor Watts. You want a new? I would just say I I would second um, uh, Councillor Lennox. <laughs> That's great. We've got a proposal and seconder for both options. Are there any other alternative proposals? I am happy to go uh, to the vote on the two proposals. The first one, uh, the uh, proposal from Councillor Mackay is to accept the recommendations, seconded by Councillor Crawford, and the amendment is from Councillor Lennox uh, for a continuation of the application, seconded by Councillor Watts. I'll hand over to Lynn for the vote. Thank you, Provost. Members, when you hear your name, can you confirm if you are for the motion? or for the amendment, please. And for clarification, apology members, for clarification, the motion is um, proposed by Councillor Mackay, seconded by Councillor Crawford to approve the application. And the amendment is uh, proposed by Councillor Lennox, seconded by Councillor Watts to continue consideration of the application until a site visit has been carried out. Provost Todd. Amendment. Councillor Cowan. Amendment. Councillor Mackay. Motion. Councillor Barton. Amendment. Councillor Lennox. Amendment. Councillor Crawford. Motion. Councillor Watts. Amendment. Councillor Filson. Amendment. Councillor Hogg. Amendment. And Councillor Stewart. Amendment. I can confirm members that the amendment has been carried by, by eight votes to two and the application has been continued to allow a site visit to be carried out. Thank you, Provost. Thanks very much, Lynn. Thanks, everyone, for a, a very grown-up uh, discussion. Um, the committee's decided to go for a visit to the site and for, for more um, information to be uh, put forward uh, to determine the application at a later date. Thanks very much. Hope you have a, a good weekend and uh, stay safe. Thank you.